Hi, today we are going to talk about this chapter 8a on basics of IPv4 addressing. In this chapter we are going to cover the following network layer and the path determination and we'll cover a little bit on IPv4 address within the IP header and finally the most important chapter of all the IPv4 address classes. So let's see what's path determination and network layer. So in a typical computer network you have two computers A and B trying to talk to each other but in the computer network you have many many nodes and many many computers and typically they navigate through the internet cloud as shown in this diagram over here. So many times in the internet cloud there are traffic congestion and traffic delays. So the network layer will try to avoid these network delays to reach the destination on time. So in general the computer network we have a device called the router. So the computer router does the action of a traffic light where it actually regulates the traffic between the different directions of the network so that to avoid the minimal traffic congestion in the network. So in the actual computer network there can be many many different routers. So in this case the different routers will decide how the traffic will travel from one part of the network to another and if there is any congestion along the network you will actually travel through other alternative routes so that it can still reach the destination in the correct timing. So in general the routers are a layer 3 device they connect different networks together and they make this what we call the best path decision based on the level layer 3 information so that they can reach the destination uh, in the shortest time possible. So the router in a computer network performs an uh, action called the path determination. So basically the path determination is a term uh, to describe how the router find the best path to the destination. And this is a job that is performed by the layer 3 router. So how the router actually sends the data packet from the source to the destination, they are actually sent based on the computer network layer addressing. So different parts of the computer network are separated into different address schemes. As in this case, we have the different address schemes over here. So the address schemes are actually separated in what we call the hierarchical format. Just like this telephone network, the internet address is actually separated into different hierarchical layers. So the network address will help the router to identify a path through the network cloud. And the router uses the network address to actually identify the destination of a packet. So this network address is actually assigned by the administrator and the host address is assigned manually by the network manager. So now let's take a look at the IPv4 address within the IP header. So in the network layer datagram, it is actually consists of two separate parts, the datagram header and the datagram data itself. So these are actually encapsulated by what we call the header data and this is how the whole internet IPv4 header looks like. We have the version, the header length and other payloads within the data itself. So as you can see the whole data actually consists of all this information over here including the source address and the destination IP address and the data is actually padded below. So now let's take a look at the different IPv4 address classes. So network layer addresses are basically 
32 bits long and they are actually separated into four octets in what we call the dotted decimal format so each IPv4 address consists of two parts the network portion and the host portion so this is a IPv4 address format so in this case we are given this IPv4 address of uh, 131.108.122.204 so this IPv4 addresses can be actually translated into a binary format which is over here the binary format and in this binary format you can actually split into four parts what we call as the four octets there's octet 1 there's another octet 2 there's another octet 3 and finally there's another octet 4 so the four octets actually make up the entire IPv4 address and each octet corresponds to each different numbers the decimal number inside the IPv4 address and in this case we can actually split the four octets into the two separate parts namely the network portion and also the host portion okay so uh, we need to convert the numbers between binary and decimal the main reason is because uh, when we look at the IPv4 address in this case 131.108.122.204 this is how humans interpret the IP address because we recognize the decimal numbers but for the computers they actually recognize the binary numbers so the humans understand decimal and the PC or the computers understand binary so that's why we need to convert between the two different number formats and uh, in general we discourage the use of calculators for two reasons the first thing is that when uh, in the networking professionals they need to be able to make quick calculations on the network basis so that they can actually find out the bugs or problems in the computer network and the other reason is that in the CCNA exam no calculators are allowed so let's take a look at the network portion and the host portion so the network portion on the network ID in general is a number that is uh, allocated by a organization called the Internet Network Information Center and it actually identifies the network to which the devices attach uh, on the other hand, the host ID is normally allocated by the system network administrator to identify the device on the network. General uh, five types of uh, IPv4 address classes, but uh, in our course, we will concentrate on these three, class A, class B, and class C. So different classes have uh, different uh, portions of the network and the hosts. Say, for example, for the case of the class A network we have one uh, octet for the network portion and three octets for the host portion for the class B address we have two octets for the network portion and uh, two octets for the hosts portion and for the class C we have three octets for the network portion and one octet for the host portion let's take a look at the first class A of the IPv4 addressing so in the class A address scheme, we have one octet for the network portion and three octets for the hosts portions. And how we actually recognize the class A address is that the first bit of the IP address is always zero. So uh, the explanation again. So first bit of a IPv4 class A address is always zero. And this means that the IPv4 address will have a range from the 1.000 to 127.0.0.0 and the remaining three octets are used for the host portion 
So this means that each class A network will have up to 60 million possible IP addresses. Now let's take a look at class B. So for class B IPv4 addresses, we have uh, two octets worth of uh, network and two octets worth of host addresses. So how we recognize the class B IPv4 address, the first two bits are 1 and 0. So if we look at the explanation again, the first two bits for class B IPv4 address is 1, 0. And this means that we have possible IP addresses from 128.0.0.0 to 191.255.0.0. And the class B possible 65,000 IPv4 addresses. And lastly, we take a look at class C. So for class C address, we have only one, uh, three octets for the network portion and one octet for the host portion. And how we recognize the class C address is that the first three bits of a IPv4 class C address is 110. So uh, this is explained over here. So first three bits of a class C address is always 110 and the address ranges from 192.0.0.0 to 223.225.225.0 and this works up to have about 254 possible IP addresses in each class C network. So uh, this is a summary of all the classes in the IPv4 addressing scheme. So for the purpose of the exam, we will only concentrate on the class A class B and class C. For class D and class E, uh, they are reserved for the multicasting and also other reserved addresses. So taking note that the 127.0.0.0, uh, this is a special address known as the loopback address. Usually we use it for debugging and troubleshooting purpose. So the network address actually provide a convenient way to refer to all the addresses on the network. And two hosts with different network address will actually require a router to actually communicate. And the IP address ends with the zeros in hosts are actually referred to the network address. There is a special kind of address known as the broadcast address. So the broadcast address will actually send to every host a particular network ID. And this particular broadcast address usually ends with all the binary ones. So in this case, we have the uh, special local broadcast address of 255.255.255.255. .255 .255 .255. So whenever the router receives a message of this particular address, it will actually send the message to all the computers in its network so that all the computer will be able to receive the broadcast message. So in this case, we have a directed broadcast address of uh, 192.168.20.255. So in this case, a, a, if we take a look at this, uh, this uh, network address is actually 192.168.20. So what this means is that it will actually send out all the computers under the 192.168.20 network, the message, the broadcast message from the router. All the other computers, they are not under the same network address, for example, 192.168.30. something, they will not receive the message. So let's take a look at this example over here. Uh, assuming we have given a 
IP address over here, let's try to examine whether is it a class B address or not. So the first thing that we notice is a the IP address starts with 172, in this case 172.16. So if we take a look at 172 at the previous slide over here, we will see that 172 actually resides in this particular address range. So 172 resides in this address range, that's why we know that it is actually a class B address. Okay, so this is a class B address. So the next thing is we will determine what is the network portion of this class B address. So if we recall, if we recall the class B address, we have two octets worth of network and another two octets worth of hosts we will be able to recognize the first two octets will belong to the network portion. So in this case, the first two, first two octets refer to the 172.16. So in this case, this will be the network portion. Okay, and as mentioned earlier, our class B also have the next two octets as the hosts. So the host portion will be the last two octets, 20.200, which is the host portion. And how we actually determine the network address and the broadcast address is this. We will see the network portion, in this case is 172.16, and we will append the network portion with zeros so that this will be the network address. Okay. And the broadcast address is very much similar. That means we will actually use the same network address portion 172.16 and append it with 255.255. In the RPB4 world, there are some addresses that are actually reserved for special purposes. So these addresses are what we call private addresses. Usually these addresses are used by organizations within their internal network, like for example our campus, so that we do not connect to the internet and we do not transmit the information beyond the uh, school campus. So these are the addresses that are actually reserved for the private addresses. For class A, that is within the 10.0.0.0 series, for class B, is between the 172.16 to 172.31 and for class C, is between 192.168. That's all for this chapter. Thank you.